Hey guys. I'm tired. Hello, my gorgeous gastronomes and vampires. Welcome to T-Rex Steel City Mukbang. Where will this food journey take you today? Pull up a seat. Let's eat. Hey, guys. I already forgot something. I'll be right back. Just in case I want to use my chopsticks. I have some soup dumplings today. Um, and I want to thank all my subscribers, old and new. I love you guys so much. It is Steeler Sunday. I've missed a few. That's what I meant before. When I said I should not make promises about my landscapers outside right now. I said I should not make promises. Sesame oil. About making Mukbangs. <laughs> I have some um, sweet chili sauce. See, just like today, you know, the, the the landscaper he showed up, and he's right outside the window. I mean, this is just the type of luck I have. Okay. <laughs> you already know. Okay. But anyway, here I am. I have some spicy gochujang. Gochujang, a little bit of spicy Korean. It says it's extra spicy, so I'm going to go, you know, a little easy. I don't want to find out the hard way that I did too much. But here I am. And... <clears throat> I'm not sure what I did with my spoon. I'm so discombobulated. I'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> I think I'm ready now. I think I'm ready. I tried to uh, steam these dumplings. But they have soup in them. And I didn't want the soup to come out, but... Mm. Every time I steam them... The soup comes out but this time I steam them in a bowl so if the soup does come out I'm still gonna be able to drink it okay that was the brainstorm that I had I became hooked on these soup dumplings. And when I tell you hooked, I mean it's it's a serious addiction. It just is. I've got green lip muscles and some shrimp. That's it. Steeler game's about to start in the background. You know, I'm ready to go. I got a neighbor story for you. My goodness, guys. It's been so long since we have had a neighbor story or talked about neighbors or anything. But I got one. This one is going to blow you away. Okay? I kid you not. This neighbor story is going to blow you away. Because it blew me away. Could you not? This all happened this past week. Okay. <clears throat> Here comes the fl uh, fruit flies. But listen. I 
think I told y'all, you know, my next door neighbor moved out, the singer, that liked to sing at midnight. He moved out back in April. The place was such a disaster after he left. The landlord had to completely renovate it, you know, total renovation. That's how nasty the guy was. So, I decided that since I needed to separate my business, I would just ask if I could take over the unit. It's right next door, <laughs> you know. What better place to have your business set up than right next door to you? Landlord said, cool, no problem. He was happy to rent it to me because he knows I'm a good tenant, you know. So I rented out the space. It's an efficiency. It has just what I need. A kitchen. A break room. Bathroom. That's it. So. I didn't get moved in there until. Last week of August. But I'm officially in. And place is beautiful because it was, you know, like I said, had completely renovated. And it makes a perfect little business spot for me. It's perfect. I needed a light. My front porch light because I, I never use my front porch door. I always enter and exit from the garage door. But since the business door is closer to my front door I have started using the front door but there was never a porch light there and it gets very very dark between the two units at night it's pitch black it is pitch black literally well a lot of times I'm carrying things back and forth like I don't want to fall down in the dark or walk on something or step in poop or whatever you know what I mean <laughs> have someone attack me I don't want I'm just trying to be safe so I asked the landlord if he could fix the light he said no problem he starts to work on it finds out that there's no electricity going to the light at all he's gonna have to got the soy sauce um, set up whole new wiring just to hook up my front porch light well I knew it was going to take a while so I told him hold off on it I think I might pick up a couple of motion sensor lights off of Amazon set them up in different locations to light up exactly where I need them to light up you know, and then that way, it'll save the old man some money, it'll save time, and I can have my light faster. Because I'm working, and I need to get back and forth, and I really don't have time to wait. Everybody was happy with that. The old man was happy. He saved a little money. His nephew, who was going to do the work, was happy, because now he doesn't have to worry about rewiring <laughs> from scratch. And... I'm happy because I'm actually going to have the type of lighting that I think I need. I get the lights, put them up myself. They charge by solar, you know, power. Great. Now the one light I set up on the porch of my business which I call the crack house I set up on the porch of the crack house 
there's a huge tree in the front yard. So I found out the light was not getting any sun to charge. Came out one night, come home. The light was very dim. I could barely see. So I took it down, sat it in the sun, and let it charge up that whole day. This was just this week. <clears throat> and um, my neighbor in apartment one, Mr. Know-it-all, Mr. Supposed to be able to fix it all, Mr. Gossip of the neighborhood, He's outside one day. And we just had some idle chit chat. We're just talking back and forth. Now, we've had some disagreements over the past eight years that I've lived here. We've had some disagreements between me and him. Usually because he likes to get in people's business and, and tell you what to do as if the money's coming out of his pocket. You know, for instance, like, he told me before, I was trying to get something done at the crack house. And he was trying to tell me, no, don't, don't do that. I'm like, what do you mean don't do it? It's something I need done for my business. Who are you? <laughs> you know? It was something on the inside. And since it was an extra request, I wasn't going to ask the landlord to do it. I was just going to have it done. He told me, no, don't do that. We fell out over that. I said, don't talk to me like I'm a kid and like you're my father. You can't tell me what to do in a place that I'm renting. As long as I clear it with the landlord and he's fine with it, you have nothing to do with it. So we had an argument about that. So, But this is the type of thing that we would always fall out about. Same thing this week, <clears throat> this, this past week. Standing outside, just having an idle chit chat, talking. We're not mad at each other yet. <laughs> and I just, in casual conversation, said to him, I said, Yeah, I'm going to have to take that one light off the house, off the crack house, and I'm going to move it to the fence where the mailboxes are. Because that way, it'll be in the sun and it will shine directly at the door for motion when I, whenever I open the door the motion will set it off so now his door and my crack house door are side by side my main door it's a separate part like the house is it's set up weird like the part I live in is like a guest house it's an addition to a duplex so my part is a little bit further away from him than the crack house. He's he's actually attached to, to my business, to the crack house. He's upstairs. So <clears throat> when I said to him, I'm going to um I'm gonna move the light over to the to the fence. He's like, no, don't do that. I said, excuse me? <laughs> he said, don't do that. Are you talking to me? And I kind of chuckled and I said, <laughs> why? He said, because it's just a dumb idea. It's just stupid. It's stupid because I want to move the light into the sun so it can charge. And I get a better angle coming out of the house and I can see in the dark. That's stupid. I don't understand. I said, I'm going to be moving the light to here. Pointing to the fence. 
He said, don't do that. Real stern. Father-like. <laughs> or ruler. King. I said, um... I said, you know, this is why we always get into arguments, Mike. This is why we always get into arguments. Anytime that we've had arguments is because of reasons like this. You're you trying to tell me what to do. As if you own this place. So he says, well, I'm going to call Bill, which is the landlord, the 85-year-old man. And I try not to bother him. I usually deal with his nephew. I'm going to call Bill. Because that's just dumb. Put it on the tree. Put it on the pole. Like, I don't want it on the tree because the tree is what's stopping it from getting the sun now. You want me to put it on the tree where it's going to be even more shaded. And then it really won't get any sun. <laughs> I said, tell me one reason that I cannot put it on this post, on this fence. Tell me one reason. Nothing goes on this fence. I said, is that why the mailboxes are sitting here? I mean, there's three mailboxes attached to the fence. Is that why they're here? Because nothing goes on it? That made him mad. He says, I put the mailboxes there. I said, oh, so it's okay for you to put something on the fence, but I can't put a light on the fence. He was like, well, move it down that way. By your mailbox. Well, I have two mailboxes, technically, because I'm in both of these units. So this is my mailbox that I'm trying to sit beside. And that's my mailbox, too. If I move it down to my other mailbox... It's not going to shine at the door that I need. It's going to shine at my other door. And I've already got a light shining at that door. I said, the sun does not hit right there either as much as it does where I'm trying to put it. He went ballistic. When I told him the sun didn't shine where he wanted me to move it, he totally went ballistic. He starts screaming and hollering at me, telling me that he lived here 23 years, and I'm not supposed to be telling him where the sun shines. He knows the sun shines by that other mailbox. He's screaming. I've lived here 23 years, and you're going to tell me? You're trying to tell me where the sun shines on this street? I'm now looking at him like he's crazy because he's yelling like he's crazy. Now I'm mad. Like, you don't want to get me mad, really. That's the wrong thing. Now I'm mad. So, I said, what is the reason that I cannot put the light on the fence? Tell me what is it going to hurt? What is it going to hurt? He stood there and looked at me, just turning red and shaking. And I'm thinking in my mind, am I safe? Because he looks like he's about to explode and punch me in the face or something. But I stood my ground. You know, I said, tell me. Tell me. What is the problem with putting the light on this fence? He said, well, people sit on that fence. I said, I haven't seen a person sit on this fence in the eight years that I've been here. People don't sit on this fence. He said, well, I sit on it. I'm like, the fence is 12 feet long. I'm taking up 
five inches to put a light. You still got <laughs> 11 and a half feet that you can still sit on. <laughs> I said, what is your problem? What is the real problem with you? Why can't I put this light on this fence? Then he says, it's my fence. I built it. It's my fence. And it's going to look stupid. It's mine. So now we're getting somewhere. Because you built the fence on the landlord's property. You think you it makes it yours. You think it makes it yours. I'm like, oh, so that's what it is. You built the fence, you think it's yours, so you don't want me to put anything on it. Even if it's going to help me see in the dark. Safety feature for me. You don't care. We get into another... We're, we're, we're just screaming back and forth at each other. You know, name calling the whole bit. Everything. We're arguing like we're married out front. You know, I don't know if all the other neighbors were listening or not, but we're arguing like a married couple. Landscaper still making all kinds of noise. So he um he has a habit of bringing his porch chair over to my sidewalk at my front door. He brings his chair over there and sits all the time instead of sitting on the sidewalk that comes out of his house. No, I didn't mind. He's been doing it all summer. This is the first year he ever did it, but he's been doing it all summer. I didn't care. I didn't care. I'm not like that. I'm not petty. Unless you make me be petty. <laughs> so, <clears throat> after the argument's kind of dying down, I'm co just coming in the house and ignoring him now. I thought about it. Okay, you don't want me to put this light up for my own safety. So, I went back outside and I said, you know what, something else, don't bring that chair over here. I said, don't you dare set that chair up on the side of this property that I rent. I said, that's the front door that I am using now. Don't you put that chair over here. That made it matter. <laughs> but hey, you want to be petty? I'm, now I'm going to show you how it feels to be so petty. So, we told each other, you know, he said, I don't want to talk to you. I said, every time we've had an argument, I never wanted to talk to you again. But you always came back talking to me. And since I'm a forgiving person, I'm always <clears throat> just start talking to you again. I said, but really, all those times, I really had hoped you wouldn't and want you to come and talk to me ever again. So, we split, <clears throat> you know, he went in his house, I came in mine. I thought he was going to go call the landlord. And, um, I didn't really care because I didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> I'm trying to save the landlord some money and, because if, if I have to call him, now he's going to have to put up the light. If I can't move the light to where I need it, then the landlord's going to have to do that expensive rewiring job so I wasn't too worried call him he's gonna rule in my favor because he wants to save money so um Ravens just scored I'm not surprised <clears throat> so <clears throat> I waited till the next day I wanted to see if the landlord was gonna call Didn't hear from him. So <clears throat> I called the landlord just to make sure 
that it was okay if I moved the light to the fence. You know, just because since Mike was telling me that it was his fence, you know, I'm, let me let me confirm that with the landlord. <laughs> let me see if that's true. Because this guy does lie. So, I called the old man. <clears throat> and I really, like I said, I hate to bother him. He's hard of hearing. He had been sick off and on lately. But I wanted to make sure that it was okay to make the move. So I called him, explained to him what happened, told him about the fight, the argument. He says, <clears throat> he said, that fence is mine. He said, yeah, Mike built it, but I paid him and I bought all the, all the, um, wood. <laughs> he said, that's my fence. He said, you can put the light there. That's all I needed to hear. I went out the next day, moved the light, Mike was so mad, he was so mad, he contacted the nephew. <coughs> He contacted the nephew and told him that when he comes outside at night, meanwhile, he never comes outside at night. He barely comes out in the daytime. But he said when he comes out at night, the light shines right in his face where I moved it to. It blinds him. It's in his face. Well, he's about six foot three. The light is waist high to me. And I'm five five. And it only comes up to my waist. But it's hitting him in his face. So the nephew calls me. He asked me if I would do him a favor. He said, do you mind, he said, I'm sorry to ask, do you mind pointing the light toward the ground so that it's not shining straight up at the house? I said, as long as it will trigger the motion sensor, sure. If it's facing the ground and it won't set off the motion sensor, then it's not doing me any good. <clears throat> so I went out, checked. And it was fine. Face it down a little bit. I said, I faced it down. I said, I'm also going to take a look at my security camera because this guy lies. Mike lies. He never comes out at night. I'm going to check the security camera. So I went back four nights, even though even though I had just moved the light that day, I went back four nights. There was no notification at all of any movement or motion during the nighttime hours. So I know Mike's lying to the landlord's nephew to get him to make me move the light again. So I told the nephew that. I said, um, I checked my camera. Mike has not been outside. No one has been out there. I said, if he has a problem with how I have the light now, after I have pointed it toward the ground, and he wants to continue to tell lies and say that it's shining in his face, tell him to call me. Tell him to come over. So I can show him my security camera footage. Tell him come over. Tell me the exact time that he was outside. And I can show him 
on the security camera footage that he's a liar. You weren't outside at that time. You weren't outside any time at night. Okay. Here's my thing. What man would be okay with having a woman coming out in the dark who's had back surgery, could fall, carrying things, I could drop something, I could walk on something, you know, sometimes stray dogs and cats run through there and drop a couple turds. I just want to see where I'm going. I just want to feel safe. That's it. What man is going to deny a woman of that? Just being safe. Feeling safe. What type of man is that? What type of man are you? That because you did not want me to put a light on a fence because you built it. Prideful, narcissistic. You build it, you don't want me to put my light on it. That's the only reason. There's no other reason. How could you? That's a pathetic human being right there. You know, I didn't think much of him after the first couple lies that he told me when I first moved in here that I found out wasn't true. Um, which one was that he told me he was the superintendent here. Landlord told me, no, he's not. <laughs> you know, he's told little lies throughout the years. So, I'm really never going to speak to him again. Never. I don't care if he comes and tries to talk and make up again. This time... I'm not talking. This time I'm going to tell him. Flat out, leave me alone. I don't ever want to talk to you again. That you could deny me of just trying to be safe because of your pride. And selfishness. I just could not believe it. Could not believe it. So that's the type of neighbor I have. Just rude. And it's over. It really is. I'll never speak to him again. <laughs> Guys, it was terrible. The blow up was terrible. I really could not believe it was happening. I, I could not believe how he was suddenly screaming like a maniac. So <laughs> that's the type of um, that's the type of luck I have, you know, but. I really think, you know, ever since I took over the crack house, I really think he might have been a little bit envious. It seemed like it, you know, like he was wondering how I could afford to do something like that. You know, I've kind of gotten vibes that he's a little bit bigoted as well. He said some things off and on throughout the years that made me, hmm, are you a little bit of a bigot, maybe? You know, like for instance, when the guys came to put the new windows in all around, they came like back in April to put the windows in, and they were Hispanic. And they didn't really speak um, very good English. 
as they worked, you know, they would speak in Spanish to each other. And then they were um, melanated Puerto Ricans. You know, they were kind of darker skin. And Mike came over because he does this. He follows workers all around. Like he's their supervisor, telling workers what to do. So they did his windows. Then when they came to do mine, he came over here to like watch them work. I'm like, you're not going to stand here in my house and watch them work. What are you doing? You watch them and, and, and supervise them enough from your place. Now you're going to do it now that they're over here. Well, no. But here's the thing that made me, like, question him. <clears throat> this is the thing that made me be suspicious of him. Another thing. When he came over... Looking for the guys. He knocks on my door. He was like, what are my boys doing? I said, what are my boys doing? Your boys? What do you mean your boys? I see two grown-ass men out there putting windows in. What are you talking about your boys? I just didn't like that, you know? I really didn't. But, yeah, he, he's kind of, um, <laughs> suspected bigot. <laughs> but, that's beside the point. I got everything I need. I got my light. I got him off my back, hopefully. You know, that I never have to speak to him again. I hope he understands that. Because I made it clear. Very. So. I am getting full, but... I can finish this. I got one dumpling. Two mussels and a shrimp left. I can finish. But this really was good. Thank you for listening to my long story. I should have told you. I should have warned you that it was a long story. <laughs> but it's been a while since we talked. So. Good to have a long chit chat. I know how much you guys like to hear neighbor stories. Well, that one was a doozy. Kind of made me wonder too, like, you know, people just snap. <laughs> like, will he do something later? You know, kind of feel like I need to just watch over my shoulder with him. And I will. I'll be very careful. Guys, if you have not tried these Bibigo, <clears throat> that's the company name, Bibigo. B-I-B-I-G-O. That's who make these? That's who makes these? Bibigo. Souped steamed dumplings. Try them out. I got these from Dollar General, of all places. Dollar General. 
Walmart has them too. But they're really delicious. But I'm going to wind it up here. It's time. If any of you are in Atlanta, I'm going to be at the Pride Festival at Piedmont Park. Um, Saturday the 14th and Sunday the 15th. That's next weekend. And I will have lemon pepper crack samples. I'm going to be handing out little bags. of lemon pepper crack samples. So if you are in Atlanta or near or around and you feel like stopping down at the Pride Festival at Piedmont Park, stop by and see me. I don't have a booth or anything. I'm just going to have a big red bag filled with lemon pepper crack samples so look for me I'm gonna have on my lemon pepper crack t-shirt and or sweatshirt I heard Atlanta's supposed to be having the same type of weather we're having here which is 60s so um stop by look for me with the red bag get your free crack sample That one's a little hard. It looked weird. But yeah. I'll see you in Hotlanta this weekend. This weekend coming up. I hope you can make it. Peace out, my gastronomes and vampires. I will see you soon.